How you doing, YouTube? Matt with Matt's Beer Reviews back with yet another review. A little bit of way back machine time. A little bit of time machine and back about four years in the form of Flying Fish Brewing. It is their NJ350 anniversary ale. It's a malt beverage brewed with molasses. Um, yeah. I just found this today. Well, not today. It was two days ago, but theatrics. I just found this today. Um, it is, uh, I've never had it before. It is uh, a beer that Flying Fish brewed for the, uh, what is it, 350th years of New Jersey. And it says, you got a problem with that. Um, they did it in 2014. Um, I never had it. And I was out and about today in, in kind of an area not too far away from where I live. But it's like an area that's just, there's no real bottle shops or anything. So, but I had time to kill. And I was like, you know what? Let me pop in to some of these kind of like backwoods bar kind of uh, bottle shops that you see in Jersey so often. Listen, uh, quick tangent. Uh, Jersey has always been a place for me to find really old, really old good beer. Um, anytime I used to drive through Jersey over the past 10 to 15 years, I would always stop and just look around and some of the shit I found, I would blow your titties off. It's crazy. Uh, so I always do that um, because there's always been wide distribution in Jersey with the way it works. So I figured I'd pop and I went to a couple different places and oddly enough, I found a bunch of really old stuff that I didn't buy because I know it'll still be there and I'll go back to like, you know what I mean, 2015 Bigfoots and, uh, you know, really old Guggen Carlos Easter beers, stuff like that that I really love. But I saw this and I was like, man, I gotta buy this. It's four years old. It's Jersey beer. Let's have at it. So let's dive into it. What is this beer? Like I said, it says 1664 to 2014 New Jersey 350 anniversary ale. We're probably celebrating 350 years of New Jersey. You got a problem with that? Malt beverage brewed with molasses. On the side here, New Jersey has always been a rich brewery, ha has always had a rich brewing heritage. 20 years before the state was named by the English in 1644, there was a Dutch brewery in what is now Hoboken. We chose to celebrate the 350th anniversary with a historic style, English stock ale, son. That's my fucking jams right there. English pale malt and flaked barley made with uh, blackstrap molasses for a hearty and complex malt flavor. For hops, we use cluster. Gotta get that cluster. Or the fuggle, baby. Uh, the first hop to be cultivated in the United States. The beer finishes with a more modern Simcoe and Centennial. The latter gives deep piney flavor and aroma. A nod to the state treasure, the Pine Barrens. Uh, that be that. 7.5% alcohol by volume. And kind of classic, you know, flying fish kind of style when it comes to what they're doing. So, yeah. Not too shabby. I'm super excited to dive into this. I love aged beer. You're talking about an English stock ale, you know, English old ale, you know. It's one of my favorite styles of beer out there. So uh, I know a lot of people out there are like flying fish, whatever, but flying fish can throw down. They can throw down when they want to. So we'll see how this one's kept. Now, that's the thing it, it, it has been kept in a pretty pooptastic, let's say that way, um, you know, kind of bottle shop. You know, it, is it going to be kept perfectly well? I, I don't know. You know, it was on a shelf. It was probably getting hit by light, getting hit by heat. But we're going to review it nonetheless. So keep that in mind. What do we have there? We have a nice, rich, heaziness, soft kind of apple cider kind of look to it. And got a nice pinky finger head in there. So, you know, I think she's still good on the carbonation front. Like a little ox station going. You never know. And there's little bits and pieces floating around there. A little bit of light colored doo doo water, if you will, as a stock ale of four years should be. Let's get in. Okay. You're getting that soft caramel itching towards sugar daddy vibe, which is where I wanted it to go. But I'm surprised as hell that there's a bittering hop component. Now, for the lack of. I don't know what it is because that's not even what I meant to say. It could be a combination of the blackstrap molasses and this hops. Blackstrap molasses come off way up, way bittering, way hoppy to me. Um, just in itself, can way kind of bittering. I shouldn't even say hoppy because there's no hops in them. Um, but it gives those kind of similar components of the hops. So it could be that blackstrap molasses. But yeah, there's a soft, sharp bittering. And by soft, sharp, I mean it's muted down, but that bits and pieces that are there are still kind of biting and it's kind of washed around it's definitely giving the american barley wine vibes a light because the the um, sugar added caramel component isn't nothing over the top but at the same time that bittering isn't over the top either so everything's kind of muted down 
Oh my god, I just got a big, huge pop of like Werther's Originals butterscotch in there too. In a good way, not in a negative off flavor kind of way. So this has this rich kind of toffee, caramel vibes to it with a soft bittering floating around in there. So I gotta dive in. Cheers. It's all right. You know, it's pretty much exactly what the nose led me to believe. Um, it's giving you a soft kind of slightly watered down caramel sugar daddy toffee vibes. And you're getting this kind of burnt, ultra burnt. That's your black strap molasses. Slightly bittering ghost of hops past that are still kind of holding on there. Kind of bitterness in there. It's definitely thin. It's definitely watered down. Oddly enough, there's not a ton of oxidation in there. I think it's just a 7% beer that should have been 10, 15, somewhere between 10 to 15% that, that it would hold up for a super long period of time kind of beer. So it's, you know, 7% that kind of thinned out with time. Maybe not even, uh, you know what? I want to say there's a bit of carbonation or, uh, or carbonation, um, oxidation, but it's not really that bad. It's just that bittering is bigger than it should be where, where it's sitting at four years. Again, a combination of those hops in that molasses. And then there's that soft, watery kind of caramel thing. It's kind of fun. It's a fun beer. I like it. I think it's super fun. Uh, the fact that I found it just kind of tickles me pink because it's one of my favorite things to do is to find these old, <sighs> sellerable beers. This one didn't hold up all that great, but it had the potential to do that. And just ended up coming off super fun. And I'm super glad I'm reviewing it. Oddly enough, let's cut to the chase because I don't have much more to say. It's a, it's a, wa a watery, a soft toffee caramel sugar daddy with that bittering um, a burnt black strap molasses and then that soft bittering in the background. Is it one of the better stock ales? And when I say stock ales, I put them in with like kind of, uh, it, it, listen, there's stock ale, old ale, English barley wine. They all kind of meld on the edges from each other. So stock ale, old stock, you know, some are floating around there, old ale uh, that I've had as a late. It's going to default to that because they haven't had a ton, but there's much, much better. Uh, North Coast old stock, um, you know what I mean? What Kunin does, all that kind of stuff. So it's tasty. It's fun where it's sitting, but it's more a unique experience as opposed to something great that I've had. So I'm kind of getting giddy on that aspect of the age thing as opposed to being a really good beer. Value and availability. Availability. I know where a bunch of them are. If you want to know, let me know, and I'll let you know. And availability or value. Flip the script there. Usually the other one last. It was $9? $9 for a seven fifty of a four-year-old stock ale. I'd buy it again just to see what happens to it in another five years. Let's put it that way. Um, and leave you with, if you like what we like, if you like aged beers, old beers, and you just want to try stuff that kind of has some bits and pieces of time on it. It's fun. I think it's fun. It's a fun experiment. You should try it too. So there you go. Que squeaky seat and all. Man, that thing's going to oil that fucker. Uh, anyway, hopefully you guys enjoyed the review down there if you want to talk about it. Massive beers if you want to check me out doing the social media stuff. Beer Massive uh, if you want to check me out doing the podcasting stuff. And hopefully you guys enjoyed the review. Hopefully you're enjoying a nice little four-year-old beer right now. And hope we'll see you next time. Cheers.